This is probably the biggest mistake I've made on this car to date. All right, y'all, so tonight I am starting on the wiring harness for Wide Fox. So the intention of this is to really uh, make a, a slim down engine harness, honestly, from the Ford factory harness for going in. So as you see, I've already put the engine in, and this is just the five liter that came out of the 92 that I had um, that I'm gonna run in 2018 just to get the car up, running, tested, kind of beat on a little bit and to see what I can break and what I need to fix. So the intention with this is to get the harness slimmed down, tucked, and just really kind of cleaned up necessarily. So there's a lot of things you know that are on these harnesses that, um, I don't know, it just the big bundle coming out of the firewall just really doesn't appeal to me. And you got harness uh, wires running everywhere. The plastic sheathing they come in, um, they tend to break over time. And really just kind of wanted to get away from that, really. So really what I started to do was, after the engine was in, I put the harness in, coming out the AC uh, piece where I told you I was going to probably put in a grommet or a mil spec connector. I'm not totally not sure yet. What I'm really doing is just adding in back in the accessories to understand where everything needs to be wired to, like the final destination point, since I know roughly the starting point. What I'm going to do is find out where the final destination really needs to be. So I know like, you know, you've got the intake tube coming down. You'll have the map that you can come in through the side here, uh, through the hole and that, or if you did a cold air intake down, you could do the map. But really what I'm looking for is kind of how to break these systems up because I'm going to want to individually wire them. So at this point, I've just taken off the plastic sheathing, which I think is junk. It basically disintegrates in your hand over time. And then I really just kind of connecting everything um, to figure out kind of what has to stay and then where I can basically rewire everything. What I plan to do long term is to uh, anything that has to come in the engine bay from the back here, what I'll do is just repin the ECU, basically take the pins out, rerun the wires because these things are like a big snake mess. What I'll do is I'll rerun the wires and do them one by one. I won't have to worry about um, getting mixed up or anything, and I'll just do it that way. So everything will come out here. I'll either come out the side where the grommet is, where the radio connector was, because I'm not going to run a, uh, an antenna on this car, so I can use that. And then there's also one on the driver's side. So really, as I'm kind of going through this, I'm just going to put the accessories back in one by one figure out what the harness is that needs to go to that. And then really, the thing I'm really looking for on this is to find out what I don't need. I don't have emissions in my county, so I don't really have need to uh, worry about having a smog pump in there, the EGR, a lot of these uh, vacuum lines that I know were needed on the 92. Because this chassis is an 80, really all I need is the, the two O2 sensors to feed the uh, ECM. And most of this stuff that was uh, emissions related can be taken out. Now again, this car is an 80, so everything inside is either electrical or cable driven. There is nothing vacuum like on the 87 and 93s that require a vacuum source to change uh, the HVAC controls. I don't have any of that. It's all cable, which is okay. So really at this point, what you're going to see is, is to start put this thing together. Start putting all the accessories in, connect the wire harnesses up, and what you're going to see is a lot of colorful wires kind of zigzagging all over the place as I figure out what stays, what goes, what moves, and how to get to the final solution. Okay, so you can kind of see a little bit of progress. So I've got the intake set on there with a couple bolts holding it on. The cold air intake on, so you can see now through the process of elimination down here, one plug is in for the mass. Uh, I've got one for obviously the IAC. I've got a plug here that doesn't have a home that I'm going to have to find one for. So this is the EGR that the car never had, the 92 never had. So that is something that I can uh, not really delete, but take out and get away from the engine bay. And if you kind of look at the wiring here, you can start to see some of this madness. So you've got 
two relays here that don't have to be in the engine bay. These could be pulled back into the cabin, so I'm gonna do that. And then you've got a couple other plugs here that are for airbag crash sensors that on a 92 worked, on an 80 won't. So all of this stuff here, two relays and two crash sensors, all of this can go into the cabin and get out of the engine bay. If I go to the other side, you can start to see the wiper motors in. So there's a plug that I do need to keep. Booster is in just to make sure I've put the brake lines in. And you can start to see um, holes being taken up. So this is uh, right here is the speedometer cable, this black one going in. Brake lines, obviously keeping those. That'll be cleaned up. That'll be cleaned up. But I do need to change the master cylinder to probably a 93 Cobra master cylinder so that it'll incorporate the disc brakes. And then it's a matter of uh, process of elimination. I still have a lot of stuff hanging out here. Obviously, you've got um, stuff that goes to the coil, so I need to figure out if I'm going to move the coil or not. And then uh, some other pieces. So this is stuff that needs to be done. One thing I've noticed on the inside now by starting to put things in is that once I put that HVAC box in, the ECM has nowhere to be hidden and the main bundle, if you notice up there coming in that AC hole, that is going to be severely tight to get that piece in. It was never designed to be that far inboard. It was always bent to be outboard, kind of where the other one is coming in. So I'm going to get the uh, AC pieces taken out of the HVAC box and then put that in and start figuring out what fits and what doesn't and what has to be moved. Okay, so as I've shown you the inside box, and the HVAC and all that stuff is going to get really crowded really fast. So one of the things I'm doing right now is just taking apart the HVAC box. One, to make it lighter so I can take it in and out. I'm also going to take out the HVAC piece. Now this is the HVAC cooler or the uh, whatever you want to call it. The core, I guess. Since I'm not going to run HVAC, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. And then figure out how to plug up the box in its way. Now, this area here where the inlet and outlet come in is where that hole is in the firewall that I'm gonna have to plug, so this is garbage. And then I obviously need to clean a lot on this box. So everything will get cleaned out. I need to make sure it works. Um, heater core, this is gonna be replaced, so I need to buy a new one of these before I put it back in permanently. I don't know if this blower motor works, but it is darn rusty, so I'll probably end up replacing this anyway and uh, getting a new one in so that way I don't have to take it back out later. So all I've done is just taking it apart. I want to make it as light as possible to kind of simulate everything that I need for this and then I'll decide how much I need to eliminate out and move and change and all that. So let's get this back assembled and I'll put it back in the car and we'll see where we are. Okay, so with the case all back together, what you think you notice is this is the HVAC hole that with the core out, this is basically just a big open leak to the HVAC system. So I'm gonna to have to plug up this hole and then this is the condenser drain. Basically it drips out through the firewall. So that also needs to be plugged probably from the inside which is some uh, boom mat or something. This, I'll probably have to build some kind of uh, plastic bracket to cover that up. And then these studs will go through the firewall, these two right here and the blower motor needs to be replaced. Now if I show you the HVAC box put in place, there's almost basically enough for my fingers to go through. I'll tell you, my fingers are definitely smaller than this bundle of wires trying to go through. So now looking on the inside, I can tell you, an ECM, <laughs> it's not gonna fit. Look it up to where the, uh, let's see, that's the, right there is the coolant, there are the heater core coming in, and then the HVAC, you can see, kind of comes in through there. Oh yeah, that's going to be a tight squeeze. So, this may be a bad decision on my part to do this this way. Okay, so with a little more perseverance and stupidity, I have made a little bit of progress. So, one thing I noticed was that I mentioned the crash zone sensors. These actually are a single circuit in there, so connector inside goes there. That probably went to the uh, main harness, I'm gonna guess, that runs across the car. So 
I'm gonna delete that circuit out for now. Now you can also see that the firewall grommet, I basically split in half. And if I have to put this in, what I've done is I've made it so that it will actually conform back and then I can seal up inside. So that is split off at least. And now you see all the lovely wires. <sighs> this may be the single stupidest thing I've done so far on this car. Um, only time is going to tell, but basically the next piece I'm trying to get to is these salt and pepper shakers. Um, I don't think these need to be outside in the engine bay. They're kind of in line, so I'm going to cut all the harnesses loose, get as much of the wiring out of this. And what I want to do is start separating it out. So into the stuff that can go back into the car and then stuff that has to come out into the engine bay from the ECM harness here. So in and out and Basically, it's a matter of keep cutting and figure out what the heck everything goes to and what has to stay. Okay, so now I've put the front fascia on, and now I can start to see at least where these harnesses coming out. So on the driver's side, you've got this one long harness that runs all the way down here. One lead does the lights on the driver's side. The other lead kind of goes across car and does the lights on the passenger side. So... I just need to figure out what circuits need to stay, obviously, to run the headlamps, the turn signals, the marker lamps, all that's got to stay, but there are a lot of additional plugs in here that, for the four-cylinder car that was in here, is probably like the coil and some of that other stuff uh, that just needs to be taken out. So, again, strip off the grommet, take out all of these circuits I don't need, trace them back into the car, and then just eliminate them as I don't need them and I probably have to replace them with something coming out of the ECM for gauges and other pieces like that. So this is where I'm going to leave you for this episode, but let me explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because some people have asked, why did I not just take the, the Ford engine harness, sell it, scrap it, whatever else, and just go buy it an aftermarket one? Part of it is... I want the struggle of learning how to do this. So in 2018, one of my big goals for myself is that I want to go learn all the stuff that I don't know. Metal shaping, I don't know any of that. Wrapping a vehicle, I don't know any of that. I don't like electrical. This is why I put it off so long, but it's going to have to happen. So rather than just avoid it, I'm just going to tackle it head on. So you can go get an aftermarket engine harness from like uh, Painless or Ron Francis and that, and they're six, seven, eight hundred dollars for that. It's basically plug and play. I already had this harness; it was free. Came out of the '92 that was wrecked. So why I'm taking it apart circuit by circuit is because I want to learn and force myself to learn how to go through a wiring diagram circuit by painful circuit to be able to strip out a harness like this because it's only going to benefit me later on if I ever have to do it for something else. So guys, well, that's it for why I'm doing this. So I'll leave you with that. And just remember, this is an investment year for me in 2018. I'm putting a whole lot into myself because I want to make this channel huge and ridiculous. And you're just going to have to wait to see what I've got up my sleeve because it's going to be awesome. We'll see you next time.